Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 161, and Happy New Year to you. This is the first meeting of 2019. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well and had enough days to recover after all the festivities of the new year. I guess I was trying to say millennium or something exciting like that, but there is no such thing on any of that. Anyway, I expect this will be a pretty short meeting. Uh, we're going to do triage, and we'll talk about anything that people are here. Um, that want to talk about, and we'll see how that goes. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now, and are watching us right here, right now. On that note, let's go ahead and get moving along. Bob, ready to trash? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Um, uh, these bottom three don't count. I don't know why we haven't put this VS 2019 support in its correct place. Um, Maybe we should do that. Yeah. Oh, it has a mouse. Oh, it doesn't have a label. That's why it keeps showing up. Um, I think we probably should put this in 4.0 since it's probably going to be 4.0 um, at this point because we have a pull request discussing this and the follow-on problems that it has. But I think this is going to land at 4.0, right? Uh, Timing-wise, I guess, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do that. And we'll put it in, um, I guess, the votive label. And carry on, carry on. All right. So who would vote the label? Because it said Bob already put it on there. Yeah, I... Uh, um, why did I remove them? Bob removed it. Um, yeah. Um, and I did it two meetings ago. Maybe because you want to talk about it some more? Um, I wasn't terribly interested. Yeah. Um, maybe it was the uh, discussion of the pull request? Maybe. Um, anyway, I think but that was we'll last year, so never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. Um, and Christopher is taking the lead on actually implementing at this point, so yay. Um, someone wants Wix 3.6. Uh, we don't make these old ones available because they have security vulnerabilities in them, particularly Wix 3.6. Um, and CodeFlex went down and took their... Well, you can go them. dig them out of the archive if you want to go dig them out. Yeah. The problem is... CodeFlex went to this archive model rather than just a uh, you know read-only site, and it's difficult. Yeah, so I, I think the answer is we don't make these available for. Yeah, but he wants it for. I don't know what to do here, right? Making insecure versions available. Yeah, I. I they were published. CodeFlex ruined our direct links. You can get them out of the archive, but we're not going to do the work to stand them back up given the vulnerabilities. I think is where I would go. Yeah, all right, let's do that. Let's when we remove them hmm? before CodePlex went down? No, we no, the, the links are still there. The link, well, actually, that's maybe the secondary thing. There are still links to them from wixtoolsite.org, and uh, we didn't we didn't remove the the releases from CodeFlex. We I put up a you know please do not use this because it has security vulnerabilities in it um, in each of the releases prior to the ones with fixes, but they were still available. We didn't actively take them down. CodeFlex then actively took them down. Um, okay. All right. So. Accelerator keys not working as expected using Western BA. Yeah, I've seen this before. before. <laughs> in stereo. Um, yeah. yeah, we can put this in 4X and someone can go dig into it if they want. And bring it to 4.0 if they're going to fix it. But, yeah, it's that works. Uh, light fails even if path does not contain Unicode characters. So something in his path is giving a causing something in the code because there's a light 001, which is not a great help, um, that they have an invalid path somewhere. Yeah, and unfortunately, there's a, a bit here. For example, when I add these lines, and then blanks, um, uh, which I think is what happens when uh, you try to put XML in a non-code block. Yeah, but maybe I can edit that over Yeah, if you go in and edit it, you see. Oh. Okay. 
There it is. Did you update it already? Yep. Oh, dang it. That was too slow. Uh, there we go. But that actually wasn't very illuminating. No. Um, this error code is interesting. I cannot grab that error code. There's no way. Oh, that was close. It's invalid name. Invalid name? Yeah. Which is, you know, each result speak for file name, director name, or volume label syntax is incorrect. Yeah. Um, I think I think we have to ask what the actual, what, you know, what the source path is. Yeah, it's an exception. They should put a debugger on it and get an exact thing down to the. Oh, okay, that thing through. That's going to be should be fairly straightforward, and then look at the path that's in there. And then we probably should catch that path after that. So uh, let's uh, let's go with that that way, right? And I mean, if we can come up with something, we basically should handle this error better. Uh, yeah, I don't disagree with that. Don't disagree with that. All right. So how do we? What do we do with this? Uh, Put it in 4x and say, "Hey, go dig into this a little bit more." Um, or do we leave, let's leave it for triage, I guess. So um, yeah, ask yeah. them to see if, debug into it a little bit more. Should be very easy to debug. There's mm -hmm. the command line you run, and then yeah, set for when exception is thrown, and then boom, you'll get dropped right on the line of code, and can look at the path that is upset. Except it's probably cabin or up. Um, that'll be useful to know as well, right? And if so, then it just means that we need to, like, well, in Wix 4, that's all done differently. So we'll just need to know what's caused that error and put out a better error message. Namely, try to get it so we can tell which path is bad. Okay. Um, cannot open standard projects. Ah. I think Sean has determined that all of these are the root cause of the same thing. And my mouse wheel's not working. There we go. Cool. So the workaround to this is to fix those issues. <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. Cool. One kind of workaround, yes. Well, so yeah, that's the problem. And then this is the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, you need MS Build 15 to build those projects. And you can't use MS Build 15 yet. So I think we can put these as uh, duplicates. So Although, we're, this is back to just, this is project harvesting, right? Yes. Yeah. This is okay. heat trying to read these projects and well, not being able to. Yeah, specifically project harvesting, not directory harvesting. So Correct. technically, that's a workaround. Uh, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. That's true. Anyway. You can add that if you'd like. Um, and then these are duped away and away. All right. I think that's all the issues then. Anything else you guys want to talk about since we're the only ones that made it um, through the new year to today and uh, don't have a large peanut gallery out there? Sean, you got anything? I guess what's going on with the setup uh, micro repo? Uh, nothing right now. Um, at some point, we'll want to talk about what we're doing there. Um, a lot of it is questionable whether we should bother with the setup repo at a certain level. If we're going to be shipping NuGet packages for everything, do we still ship a setup, a full-blown setup or not? Um, that's the a debate that can be had. I'm not prepared to have that debate right now, but that's kind of why setup is just sitting there at this point. I guess I would think setup would be the easiest way to get people trying it out. Because then they could just install it like they can install the old version. And uh, well, the theory is that you'll just be able to do, you know, at, and go to your 
NuGet Manager and install package, and that'll bring it in as well. Um, and then you'll you'll be able to switch to Wix 4 or whatever, bring up to Wix 4 without having to install anything. Plus, Wix 4 wouldn't remove Wix 3, I don't think. Because they're not. They're like not. all those extensions that they would have been using, aren't they going to have to remove them? Or I guess I just don't think it's as simple as just install some NuGet packages. I, I it, And with 4, that is the idea, is that it will be as simple as installing one or a few more you know, NuGet packages for all the extensions that you want. Now how close are we in, in the existing NuGet packages, though, to having that stuff all wired up. So, for example, we have the extensions. Um, uh, you know, are the targets all set up to to wire them in? Mm -hmm. I think so. I'd have to go double check. I don't know that I've tried running it um, with Votive on 2017 yet, but that's. I mean, I believe everything's in place to start. You know, running down any issues in the code working that way. Okay. What about uh, Beetle, stat, uh native libraries? Those work now. Okay, cool. WCAUtl, DUtl, WCAUtl. Uh, I have verified DUtl because I've used it in test projects, and it was really okay. nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Add DUtl, thank you. And I carried on. So, um, yeah. Now, I don't, it's, it's DUtl probably only support for Visual Studio 2017. I don't know that it has all the permutations for all the other versions yet. You have no? 15 and 19. 15 and 17. All right, great. Which I think is kind of where we cut the bar anyway. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and that's 15 using the 17 compiler and the 15 library setup option. Yes. That sounds right. I mean, it's using the V140 and V141 tool sets. Yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, that... that that works, and I believe the project works. Oh, 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 it's an SDK style project. Sorry, I was wrong. The MS Sorry, build which? thing works. Sorry, the, the MS build integration for Wix works, um, but you have to change your project more. It is not at a project reference. I, I, I remember that correctly because we went with the, um, it's currently an SDK style project, so you have to change your project to be an SDK style project. At the um, that's so more that's not yeah that that takes more work. Uh, what about uh, using the framework MS build support? Framework MS build support. Currently, tools ships with Net Standard MS build and Net F, Net four six one MS build. Uh. Yeah, it, I think it only uses the SDK style project, and the reason it ships both of those targets is because, or both of those types of DLLs is because if you launch MS Build from .NET, you get the .NET standard one, and if you launch it from MS Build from the command line, you get the .NET 4.6.1 version. Right, uh, but I'm asking, is it possible that we could use NuGet packages from your Wix proj and build with Framework MS build, or is is the targets issue independent of framework versus its core? The targets, I'm I'm not. Those words aren't parsing for me. <laughs> Sorry. The, the The idea is theoretically, if we ship everything via NuGet, mm -hmm. the way you would use Wix in a project is you add the NuGet reference right to the Wix Proj, and through the magic and whatnot of NuGet, it gets wired up and building then just works. Correct? Yeah, but it does so through the SDK. Right now, it's it's it does so through the SDK style project. Okay, okay. So the answer is no. Right now, at least, there's no support for using framework in this build from uh, no, because you can use MS Build or new style projects through Framework MS Build. Mm -hmm. 
Right, that's where you confused me. If you have, well, if you have a, a late enough version. Correct. <sighs> okay. Um, okay. Obviously needing, but the, you're saying SDK style projects for Wix? Mm -hmm. Work. I believe they work. Huh. Yeah, so, I mean, so part of the thinking here that I, I again, this, this all falls into setup projects. So, hey, preview of the setup discussion. Um, <laughs> Sorry. We're just going to call it that. So when you go from three to four, it's it's just like when you went from two to three, the the project system changed, right? Because I don't think two was, two was that funky old yeah. version. And then when you came to three, it was actually all MS build based. Um, and I forget if you know how much Votive did in there. But when you come three to four, it's going to be another change in your project file. Your project file is going to have a different shape, um, a little bit different shape, um, mostly because it's going to be an SDK style project, right? That's that's going to be a requirement. Uh, well, we can talk about that, right? Um, that is the that is the. I'd argue most correct, given all the other weird side effects you can get into, the most correct way to get um, Wix to work correctly when being pulled down as a NuGet package. Trying to bring your tools down as a one of the old style NuGet packages, not as an SDK style, aka using the props file, is complicated that you'll have to do a NuGet restore before you can load the project, before you can do anything with the project, which is not a great experience. If you're an SDK style project, Visual Studio will automatically restore the SDK before attempting to load the project, and all that should just work. So. When you're, if you're going to a NuGet style build system, becoming an SDK style project has those advantages, and so keeping the old way doesn't work out so well. The old style NuGet. Interesting. So, um, so. I guess so. The other, my other confusion, since I've been primarily working in Wix for on full framework, is. If so, right now Wix is not one of the well-known SDKs. Is the goal that we're going to follow their their if if it becomes extensible, will be an SDK style project that MS Build knows how to fetch from NuGet. So it turns out that they have finished enough of this in a late enough version of MS Build number number, I don't know, some number of 15, that you SDK style projects are fully supported from NuGet now. If you put your SDK style okay. project in there with your custom NuGet name slash your version number, whatever number that is, then they will do the restore for you and everything works correctly. I mean, so that okay. that that theory that they're going to let you you know have an extensible system to find all your project systems that works yeah. if you're a NuGet package and follow this particular style. That's the only one that I know of that works outside of the ones that they cheat and put inside the boxes of Visual Studio. Right, right. Uh, but uh, that also presumes that we're shipping on NuGet.org, correct? Uh, correct. Which was okay. always the plan of wreck. Oh no. No, you just have to have you just have to add the no, as long as your feed is known, it will resolve from there. It does not have to be nuget.org. Though by default it's by default no. it's nuget.org, right? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. what ships in the box, so we should be on nuget.org, which was our plan. So that's like not a big problem. You know, when you follow those. Except that we're not there, there now. now. Well, yeah, except that we're not there now, and until we're kind of ready to pull the trigger on the first release of Wix 4, that's just going to be a tripping point. It's going to be, um, here, add this line to your NuGet config, or all the other different places that you can add additional package sources to our right. private package source. And then, poof, you can test it just like any, like, NuGet.org. And yeah. just haven't gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, let's Yeah, no, no, it's definitely, definitely too early for that. I'm just, it. it well, I don't know that, that it's that too or, I mean, it's we're getting close for experimentation, right? People willing to take a custom project and go from there. Like, uh, who was asking questions? Was it Edwin, I think, um, this last week? Uh, 
Yeah, who I, I haven't responded to. I saw his mail. I mean, yeah, Edwin Castro is asking, hey, I've been you know, trying to get a feel for what Wix4 is all about. For someone like that, that we could say, these are the parts that work, then he'd be like, oh, I could actually use this and would understand when, I mean, I think, would understand the difference when he, like, used something that might not work and it just falls apart completely. He'd be like, yeah, okay, I stepped off the edge. But if you stay on the, you know, narrow path, which is at this point can build MSIs um, that don't use merge modules, I think is ba most of the issue. And there's, I'm sure there's plenty of other bugs, but you can build an MSI and a Wixlib straight up that doesn't mm -hmm. use merge modules. I think that should all work. Can't build bundles, as Sean or has pointed out, um, has found, because <coughs> um, that work's just not done. And merge modules just not done. It will get done. And you can't build patches, and patching is going to be one of the hardest things. You can't build instance transforms um, right now, or rather, oh. you can say to, but it won't do it for you. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> so sad, right? Um, so when you look at it, you're like, hey, I can build a straight up MSI, and it will work all using all the new tech from top to bottom. Yeah, I guess, um, sorry, this, this is a, I guess this is the, the philosophy of NuGet, um, the philosophy of not having your build tools baked in. Um, right. the, the, the requirement to, you know, add a private feed or to, you know, force publishing on NuGet.org um, is, uh, it just feels really foreign to me because, you know, your build tools should be fetched from the network. But that has come and gone. Um, the, I guess the issue, um, I guess the, the problem is going to be, you know, what does it take? The problem is going to be, can we automate the conversion of the project or is it something we just have to document? Because I'm thrilled with the idea of documenting that. Uh, I, my understanding is that Votive could do the migration. There is a Which place in Votive. Cop could also do it. Uh, oh, and sure, Wixcop could do it. I mean, in the end, it's just an XML file. I mean, thank goodness, MS Build is just an XML file. Then you just have to decide how you want to operate over it. Do you want to, like, try to load it through MS Build and manipulate it in there, or do you just take an XML editor to it and whack it that way? And honestly, in the end, an XML editor generally is easier, unless you need to yeah. the conditions, which we shouldn't need to. Um, and the targets files themselves haven't radically changed that are behind the SDK style project. So there isn't like we're going to have to radically change the whole project. Um, and it's not like we're adding, you know, support in Votive for globbing, and even though people might like that, which is the whole, let me just automatically find all your WXS files for you. Like, we haven't, Votive doesn't do that, and the project file will work just fine, continuing to pull in, you know, file targets as listed. So it's not a whole lot of change. It's not expected to be a whole lot of changes to your project file. In the end, I expect it's add this attribute to the top, delete a bunch of things that refer to Wix 3, and then okay. you have okay. you are on the new you're on the new style. So Okay, yeah. and then Votive being the place to do it means you install the install Votive, install the extension, and then it can offer to convert the projects and add the NuGet reference. Uh it does I don't want to call it a NuGet okay. reference. It adds the SDK attribute. See, it doesn't. It's not a NuGet reference. It adds the SDK. Okay. Right, right. Right. Okay. No. 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 You're right. I guess I'm. It happens to be backed by NuGet, but that's an implementation detail behind the fact that it's an SDK style project. Right. With the SDK SDK style project, then it it doesn't have to add an explicit reference. Correct. There is no. Or rather, it is that that attribute at the top is the reference. Right. Um, the references that would need to be added would be like references to um, the extensions that you're using. Okay, right, right. And, you know, okay, whacking out yeah. their hint path and, you know, adding them through different mechanisms. Right, right, okay. And, and this all turns into how much do you want to make, how nice do you want Votive to convert from Wix 3 to Wix 4. I don't think it's going to work out. I don't think that experience is going to work out. Well, unless it wires in Wixcop and like does all the source code conversion for you, and I, I think it's just a whole yeah. lot of work. So I think the idea that maybe that the Wixcop 
can say, cool, you have a directory, let me just whack this into Wix 4 and it can fix your Wix projects. That, to yeah. me, makes more sense, and then go and open it in Votive. And Votive then will be like, hey, I see compile elements inside a project file, and it finds the Wix targets in memory like it always did, and hey, everything just kind of rolls from there because Visual Studio should have restored the SDK style before Votive opened and everything kind okay. of works. Okay. That's the theory of it. Um, now, I know Visual Studio... 2019 is making package load much more async. They have said that, and I keep waiting for the day that Votive just kind of mm-hmm. runs into the wall in that. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's <laughs> that's apparently not today. Um, so we'll just keep going. Okay. Well, the good news is if we did it in Wixcop, we would have you know functioning code more easily tested outside the scope of a Visual Studio extension, which is not pleasant or fun to debug. Uh, so someone could do the work if it were present in Wixcop. We'd say, hey, look, here's some code. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Um, there are definitely going to be some some corner cases, like harvesting, probably. Maybe not. But I can see that being, you know, more of a problem uh, to convert the existing offering. But yeah, Wix extensions would be the the next big one. Yeah, Wix extensions would be the next hard thing to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. Because to do that, you're also going to have to fire off a, a NuGet restore or something, and I, I don't know if that means that you yeah. have to generate a packages config for them and then add. Th- I, I don't. Uh, you know, I, or try to programmatically call the NuGet install. I, I just like. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know much work that's going to be to convert a project using session. It could just be, hey, we converted your Wix 4 project. When it fails to build, delete your extensions and go <laughs> at them. And it's like, hey, that's where it starts. And then it gets better from there as people get tired of doing that. I like that. When it fails. Because it will, because it won't find them. Yeah, right. And if it did find them, they're not going to work because they're going to be Wix 3 extensions, which will not load in Wix 4. Yep. Sean's been quiet. That makes me nervous. Oh, Jacob's here. I've got that one started walking around. We should define the minge level before we stick it on NuGet. Yeah, I, 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 the whole putting it on NuGet.org is just a mental hurdle I have not cleared yet of the how much has to work and how well does it. I'm just, I'm afraid to do that. Plus, we have to get all the names right because you can't delete damn things off of NuGet once you put it up there. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do it before we had a beta. That's what I meant by too early. I mean, because technically we could put every build loop up there if we wanted yeah, to. Yeah, but but we could publish very easily how to get into the private package feed and then how to test against. That. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, because that will work. That's I, work. I'm I'm actually doing that on actually, I, yeah, one of my current projects. Yeah, I have a packages.config and I can say, you know, update the versions manually and everything's good. And you have a nuget.config that points at that server. Um, you should need to define the conversion should do if you say either 100% convert support XML users opening versus not supporting XML they are referencing. Don't quite understand that. You say either 100% convert support the XML users opening versus not supporting the XML they are referencing. I don't quite know what that means. <laughs> Jake is writing a follow up. Oh, if we do a beta with only partial for export. Yeah, that, that, I'm, that's why I'm not inclined to put Wix tool set up on NuGet until we feel much better on it. Um, but I am getting very close to saying let's put it up on the... Um, let's, let's figure out how to put it on the, pro, the private feed so people can start trying that. Shouldn't support it. Well, I mean, I don't know. We'll have Wixcop, and you'll be able to get Wixcop and then try it. And if it doesn't work for your project, then you have to tell us why, <laughs> right? We're going to get... And I think we should, we should be to a, a fairly high level of feature complete before we start, you know, shipping official milestones. Like, you know, 80-plus percent feature complete before the first beta, say. Uh, Yeah, although, yeah, I hear you, although, you know... Edwin's thing's got me thinking, well, how much of this do we have to do? Like, I, I don't have time right now this month, but like in next month, when I hopefully have more free time, um, the end of next month, next is actually, I think it's like, yeah, yeah, write this up a little bit and be like, here, here's how you can, you know, play with the current state of Wix 4, right? 
it will crash, it will not work, there will be lots of things that don't work, but these sort of things do work and that will improve over time. People could get on to that train of the trying out this current thing. Of course it's not for production, it's not even for their real projects, it's for new projects they would create to experiment with. Um, yeah, I was thinking that's the difference between an alpha and a beta, or sure, whatever. Yeah, those words don't mean anything, thank you Google. Um, yeah. Anymore. No, uh, someone at the level, uh, Edwin's level, I expect, would be able to point him at the, um, the private feed. Yeah, no, it would not be to nuke it. It'd be, this would be people on Wix devs that want to experiment, right? Like those of us here and people that participate, you know, so that it's a very, I expect it's a fairly small set of people. Also, when you do that, you can use you can also use Wix.exe from the command line by using the whole .NET tool install um, uh, Wix, and it will install that. And you can use that from the feed, and that works today because I've tried that, um, which is a way to get all of this from the command line without MS build support, of course. So, um, and the so and going all the way back to the beginning. Well, Sean, you haven't said anything. Are you just like <laughs> nodding along, or you're like, no, 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 or something? I guess I just thought it would be easier to ship what we've shipped in the past if we want to get people trying the new way before. But yeah, I, I hear you accept that with the fact that they have to go through a conversion process. My thinking was they would just go through the conversion process and then get the new thing, and then it would just do what it's supposed to do at that point. I guess no one's written this conversion process yet, so I thought uh, it would be easier to get a setup going than figuring out how to easily convert people's projects. Oh, I see what you're saying, because it, if we did like an old style setup, then it would have you know, targets in the right place and theoretically stuff should still keep on working. Although I don't know that that's true because most know. projects that exist today are going to be are, are going to have three X in them. So if if there's any manual editing, again, it comes down to you know, do we automate it? Do we write documentation? The answer is probably well, you write documentation because that's the first thing you do, and then you automate it. Yeah, I I don't think the Wix cop thing is going to be that hard for Wix projects to get your base level over. I, I think the extensions are hard, but just to get it kind of working and then you have to go replace your extensions, eh. I don't know. I guess I haven't thought through the how hard it will be to bring your extensions over. But again, this is Wix 4. You know, where we're starting at the beginning is, no, don't bring your project over. You're going to create a new one, and we'll go from there. Sort of thing. I, I guess part of it is also that, you know, Visual Studio team has made it abundantly clear that yeah, you know, NuGet is the way to go. Yeah, that's to an, that's to, to an extent. Do we do we care about the old style? I've I've just kind of given up. They've made life so difficult in so many different ways, and have shown no interest in making the old ways work well and better. Or that kind of stuff. I'm just kind of like, meh. <laughs> I don't want to deal with it in Wix. <laughs> Right, I mean, it's something that I'm sure we'll have to solve in Fire Giant because you know, our customers will still want that sort of thing. But I don't know that I want to spend my free time trying to make all that nonsense work. So, I guess I just have a hard time seeing us not shipping an installer. It's just weird. Uh, it's definitely uh, weird. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is horrible. It is terrible. And I've just accepted that that's the new reality. It just I. I, 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 yeah, I try not to think about it. Jacob's talking about 5809. This is the cabbing, that's upper casing it. And I don't make the dictionary case insensitive. I think it's the best of both worlds. With case insensitive, any file name ref would have to match exactly. I don't think that's right, because the dictionary, isn't the dictionary used to give a smart cabbing? Like, I thought that's what its purpose was. So case insensitive is the correct thing because two file names with the same case in the end work correctly. I mean it's not like we're trying to make make 
MSI install on a case sensitive operating system. We're just trying to make it work from a case sensitive file system and not fail, like not be able to find a file. So the two upper was wrong and the case insensitive was correct, I, was my thinking. Downside is anyone who isn't using, uh, if they had multiple file rests with different case. Right, so doesn't the case insensitive solve that situation with the differing cases? I mean, those are the things we want to have be the same. It's two files, same name, different casing, does not matter when doing the same file. No, we're not going to fix the Windows installer. Windows installer is not going to be able to install two files with different casing on the system. So it's not like we have to keep the casing the same. Two files with different casing is the same file in the end in Windows. Yeah, and I expect that can happen. You know, are all kinds of things. So I think case insensitive, like basically all file names when operating against Windows should be compared case insensitive. And the way the old code was doing it was too upper, which is bad. And now it's going to be not too upper and be compared case insensitive. But the name includes the path. Yeah. I I I just don't see why we should risk I don't what are you optimizing for, Jacob? Are you worried that the case insensitive is going to be slower for some reason? Like, noticeably slower to do cab file name comparisons in the dictionary? Uh, but it's the correct thing to use when compared to a file system. I mean, the correct thing is to use a case insensitive. If you're tracking file names on a Windows operating system, you should use a case insensitive dictionary if you're using dictionary. Or you need to mo modify the file names so they're all the same, you know, all uppercase, which is what we are doing before, which has all the bad side effects. I don't know what I'm missing. Well, I guess I don't know where this dictionary is being used. My assumption was that this dictionary was in the cab API, and it was for the file name to figure out that two files were being used. It wasn't actually going to look up the file with that replaced file name. It was going to use the, the dictionary file name. It was going to use the real file name. In the end, it wouldn't matter, because they're going to be the same files that we pull off of disk. Because again, we're not supporting different files Yeah, I, no, we're not supporting, no, we're not going to do the work to support a Linux machine that lets you have capital A dot text and lowercase a dot text and put them into the MSI with capital A dot text as foo dot text and lowercase a dot text as bar dot text. I mean, that's just, no, that's just madness. <laughs> but I mean, it's what happens with the with the case sensitive file system. Well, I mean, you technically speaking could do that and have it all work. I mean, you're not going to use the Windows installer to win on install on Linux, right? So, I mean, we don't have to worry about case sensitive file names going back out. Right, but I'm I'm suggesting, you know, names that differ only in case could be legitimate sources for destination file names that differ in characters. Correct. Okay. And I I just don't if we don't support that, that feels okay. But because we're it, it, the, the case we're not isn't, able to find any file when you happen to be running on a on a lowercase or on a case sensitive system, right? We were modifying the path that they applied. I understood. 
Understood. I'm saying the the case isn't you know uppercase A and lowercase A. It's you know readme.md and capital R M M D. You know. Yes. I look. I I don't understand that that whole concept um, of case sensitive file names. That's just that's just wacky. Says the guy who also writes code and languages that are case sensitive, but I'm sure that's different. <laughs> yeah, the the scenario of supporting case sensitive sorry, the the scenario to support files with different casing is not interesting. The same file with different casing. Or, uh, different files uh, The only example I have is, you know, you can f easily find repos that, you know, have very similar names. Yes, it would be really weird. So if you want to call that, you know, too much of an edge case, that's, you know, a valid lifestyle choice. Yeah, I that's yeah I agreed with basically I agreed with Bob, which is I guess why I didn't say anything, was that we don't need a switch for suppressing this and the dictionary. And if we stop to uppering, then the dictionary needs to be case insensitive for it to work the same way, essentially. And we didn't lose anything in any of this. It wasn't like we would find files on a case sensitive file system where one was capital A dot text and the other file was lowercase a dot text. That didn't work at all anyway. And adding support for that just seems maddening. I can't imagine how many problems we have with that all over. It just because Wix is way too Windows installer focused. We were we were doing two upper to essentially remove the case differences between the file names. The, the input data from the user in WXS, however, in different ways we would have got the names. Because um, you can imagine someone writing, because um, my understanding is that this is trying to, uh, the purpose of this is for smart calving. So the pur purpose is for smart calving. So it was specifically that if you had um, one file going into the GAC and one file going into the reference assembly folder or whatever that canonical case for smart calving is, you have your assembly and then you also put it in the GAC. And in one file element, you had the case one way. In the other file element, you had the case slightly different you know, capital DLL and the other one's lowercase DLL, just by accident, right, or whatever, then those would still get caught by smart capping correctly because they're the same on Windows. Even though, yes, if you happen to be using a uh, case-sensitive file system, they're different on that. That's not the way it works on Windows. So the way it, most people would think is that those are the same files, even though their DLLs were different. file name doesn't match, it compares the file hashes. Right, and doesn't this save us all of that? I, anyway, I have to go dig in the code. I mean, are we really arguing that because of the case insensitive dictionary on something that's a file name comparisons? Like, that's the issue here? Because we have all kinds of string compare, if this file name and that file name, and it's just like ordinal, ignore case. Anytime you compare file names, it should be ordinal, ignore case. Well, look what the dictionary is for. If it's used for smart calving, and, well, I mean, no, they were being too upward before. It was case insensitive before. We were just doing it before. 
doing a case and sense of dictionary, right? We were making sure they couldn't be different by, the casing be different by two uppering everything. So now we're removing the two upper and just saying, yeah, case insensitive everything. That's going to get us the same behavior in those two uses. No, same use cases. Before we used the two upper it, to make sure that all files went in where casing didn't matter. And now we're not going to two upper it, but we're going to change the dictionary to say casing doesn't matter. In both cases, casing didn't matter for the data you're putting in the dictionary. What we're fixing is that we're no longer corrupting the original file name. So it will, by two uppering it, and then using that later in the system, which was bad. By corrupting the case sensitivity of, of the yeah, file the, system. Right, the case uh, but it's of the file system. We're making a trade-off. It doesn't work at all in, in the current case, and it mostly works in the case of an case-insensitive dictionary. Yeah, we should be not, in general, we should not be mucking with the names of files when they're being referenced on disk. Like, it's just, it's a right. no, no, disaster of, like this. Of course, of course, but I'm saying we are now, by making the dictionary case-insensitive, we are ignoring, explicitly ignoring the case sensitivity of the file system. So again, we're going from it doesn't work at all to it mostly works, but you can't, but you can't do this thing that you can do if you're, you know, weird. Correct, and I believe we have other cases where file names will be compared by ordinal ignore case. So this is basically becoming more consistent with the way that Wix should be treating file names internally already. Okay, I'm just saying we're we're. If this is this is more than an XPlot question, right? This is not just, um, you know, what what parts of Wix can we make work on Linux? This is also Windows specific because of the Windows 10 subsystem thing. Sorry, I'm saying we, we're go, if we go down this road, we could not support case-sensitive files. All right, here's my concern. If we take the two upper out and we don't make the direct dictionary case-insensitive, I don't want us to start breaking smart capping or whatever was depending on it. So, with yeah, I, I sorry, I'm not proposing a solution. I'm just I, I want I want us to be clear that you know a case-sensitive dictionary is antithetical to a case-sensitive file system. So that's true. That is okay. True. That is absolutely. And again, I'm 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 reasonably comfortable saying that yes, it's it would be really weird to have two files in the same directory that differ only in case, and those you know people maybe deserve to not be supported, but you know. I guess to me this is more safe because it's matching the current behavior more and that doing case, let me put it this way, if we want to remove the case insensitivity and remove the two upper, then need to go look at what that, what the implications of having it be case sensitive are. And I have not done a deep enough analysis to know that that's the same thing. At some point you have to check whether the file actually exists with the case they gave you. And you'd have to merge them together if you're on a case insensitive file system. Yeah, and so all that code needs to be checked if we if we take out the two upper and don't add the case insensitive. Because that will be a change of behavior. And if we think that's a, if, Jacob, if you think that's a good change of behavior to get the ability to have this scenario where you can have case insensitive, different case insensitive files and then have the dictionary not collide on them, but then have their hash get checked and then find out that they're different files, I guess is the theory behind this, then okay. But I'm not confident. Someone needs to go do that validation before we take that change.
that make sense? Yeah, that seems reasonable. We should absolutely not degrade on NTFS. And if that means we don't right. fully support a case-sensitive file system, I'm, that's an excellent trade-off. The 9x% percent case is definitely you know, running Wix on NTFS or whatever the new file system is called. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't used the subsystem enough. I wonder what Windows does when you try to look at a file that's different by case. How do you And you try to edit it. <laughs> A.txt and A.txt. What does Notepad do? It's like, ah, uh, there's two. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm confident Notepad doesn't care. <laughs> you can't save this file because I don't know. All right, I don't know. And I I know deep deep down there is a way of telling NTFS to support case sensitivity, um, but the Windows thought would freak out. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sean, you got anything else? Um, we have other questions, but I think pressing. Like the, um, I've been looking at the breaking changes that we still need to make. So like 64-bit burn, we could easily do the breaking change of just throw an error if they try to build a 64-bit burn package. But then like for the 64-bit extensions, I'm not sure how we can do the breaking change there for the, like if they want to build an X64 MSI that will work on a machine that doesn't have the WoW 32 or WoW 64, whatever it is, isn't that something that people have been asking for? Yeah, a lot. It's still not Sorry, a practical I, I, concern. I, I, missed, I missed the, the what's the problem? They want to have 32-bit custom actions. Well, we will need to build 64-bit custom actions for the things that are only 32-bit today. Yes. Okay. I think that's sorry. That's not a problem to me. That's just work. So I guess is it possible to put the breaking change in there without actually implementing it yet? <laughs> what's the breaking change? Well, I might be wrong, but right now we're shipping custom action DLLs that rely on the Wild 32 support. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, some. Most. Most. I'll go with most. But the there are exceptions. some that support have 64 bit. There are some. Few. They're there are rare. Few. There are few. They're rare, they're, they're rare and, and they're there only because they were things that could not be accomplished with 32-bit code. Yeah, yeah, but but because of them, we have the infrastructure that supports switching, and and also because of ARM, we have the infrastructure to, that supports swapping out and only pulling in the correct custom action deal and all that. All that will work. Um, yeah, though to be clear, that does require extension work as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it's work. It's a lot of yeah, work, yeah. which is why, you know, we haven't sat down and said, oh, yeah, we'll just right, lock that right. out. It's like, oh, it's freaking annoying and, you know, difficult. And, yeah, we'll do all that. But, I mean, someone needs to sit down and do that work. Until then, we don't have pure or non-WOW on Windows 64. So I guess how do we put off that work while still being able to take it into a later 4 version. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Um, I believe it can be invisible to the MS... It, it should be invisible. The switching should be 100% inside the extension and the then the reference to the right DLL. The only thing that might be a problem is patching if we don't name the identifiers all with like 32-bit in them now first, and then so we can add 64 ones later. Um, well, uh, we could even do that by keeping the normal ones and things like yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I take Sean's point, which I, I hear as we can't silently do this. Why? You, you can't pick up 4.1 and 
and suddenly you get 64-bit custom actions. No, uh, that's like sorry. a huge change. Really? Oh well, I I wouldn't want that kind of change. I mean, you can argue Semver whether that's a breaking change. It's not breaking. It's, it's not breaking, and you shouldn't even. But it's can, a, if everything works, you won't even notice. No, you might notice. Because we broke something. Because something's different. I, I mean, sorry. What I'm saying is that's a that is a uh, that is a change bigger than I would expect in a you know say point release of Wix. Uh, it's a behavior change. Certainly, it's a behavior change. And at least during the three X epoch, we did not take that kind of change in. In 3.x, I, I, yeah, I, I quibble on the behavior change, but um, if it's a behavior change, is, not if there is no behavior change. Like, no, the mechanism no, by which you get there, is the it thing. is a behavior. It's a behavior change in the output of Wix. It shouldn't be a behavior change in in your in your end user runtime, but it's absolutely a behavior change in Wix. I, I'll give you that. So then the okay. question is is just. At, at what point do we introduce that? And the thing that'll be interesting is that that'll be a decision per extension. And so maybe Semver has to say, yeah, at a minor version, this change can be added. You know, how much do we want to respect Semver versus I, I changes I like Bob brought up Semver as a, as a change as a joke mostly. Um, well, I, it, you know, it, it, I, it's a perfect a, way of just capitalizing. It's like, yeah, you know what? We didn't care. We added this change. This is a big behavior change. It's It now supports WoW 64. Here's the version that supports it. Carry on. And I guess we haven't talked it. I mean, if we want to talk about how do we version the extensions in relation to the core tool set. Ah, now that's more interesting. Because then you're just saying, here's version 5. All right, it's a breaking change. Per Zember rules, this is now version 5 of IS. It now yeah, supports 64-bit yeah. IS. What does version 5 work with? Well, it works with version 4 Wix. You're like, well, isn't that kind of weird? It's like, yeah, but at least you don't have to wait for version 5 Wix to get version 5 IS support. You know, exactly. with, and you're like, uh, what version number makes sense? They don't make sense anymore. I'm like, yeah, fine. You know what? Screw Zember. We don't care. It's just in <laughs> dot whatever. And we don't change the extension numbers until um, the major version changes and we change the Wix. Or we go, you know what? Breaking changes for extensions happen at minor numbers. So 4.1 will still work with 4, you know, and go from there. Then you get, oh, then later on Wix 4.1 comes out. Does the extension 4.1 come with it? No, no, no. Doesn't come with it. But you, 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 yeah, you hit the actual point, which is um, versioning for Wix four with the you know, micro repos and and separated nuget packages is actually a thing. That we, we haven't had that before. So there is there there's more to consider in versioning than we you know have considered in Wix two and Wix three. Oh no, I I just I I knew this was coming. I, I mean as soon as we made it so the extensions could travel by themselves Anytime we make a version number change bigger than the build number changed, which will change with every build, um, yeah. we we were going to enter this world of, hmm, what does that number mean with this number? And the .NET Core guys hit it, and people got generally upset <laughs> with them doing these specific version number things. So their answer was, fine, we're going to go back, we're going to lump everything together and release it all in mass. And everything slowed down, so now they release in mass. And that was one of the things we're trying to get out of in Wix, especially since we don't frickin' touch extensions hardly ever. <sighs> yeah. At this point, they do what they do. Like the gaming extension. When was the last time the gaming extension was touched? Vista? Maybe something in Windows 7? I don't even know about that. No, it was, yeah, probably Vista. Yeah, so, so there's a perfect example. That thing's done. It's good. It doesn't need to be touched because it works the way it's going to work. Now what? I'm not disagreeing. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just uh, the, the the your example of John at Core though is the perfect ex example. It, people are angry because they're confused. It's a really confusing system they have, um, and they're also not dealing with this concept of of you know significant behavior changes. 
Well, yeah, because, and, and because and, they they are are they're in more in lockstep than than Wix four needs to be, right? Because as long as we don't make changes to accessibility or you know data that would break an extension, an extension does not have to be in lockstep, right? You're, as you say, the gaming is done, and maybe the version that's out there today is the one that is out there for the next five years. Right. The only time that we touch it again is when uh, we change the extensibility model in Wix 5 or whatever, you know, assuming yeah, we did Yeah, that. right. And that's what I'm saying. That and if we didn't, then we problem. wouldn't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I guess going back to my original question, would it make sense to have like a pure 64 version of the extension? No. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't think that that wouldn't be less work. I don't think it'd be less work. I don't think it makes more sense to users. And I think the issue of Bob that Bob made that the behavior from the output of Wix is different, but the behavior of the install time is different. I don't think most people care about the output of the MSI. Most people, and therefore, talk you just, to anyone who requires validation. Talk to a you know medical company. Yeah, fine. They're going to have to revalidate the whole thing anytime they take a new version of anything. So, I mean. I, I'm just like, yeah, we've added this. It's a new feature. The question is how sanctimonious do we want to hold Semver? Uh, absolutely not. Introduce? I, do, I, don't, I don't give any care, he looks, realizing that we're still recording, um, about Semver. I'm just I'm suggesting just the principle of least surprise says that in you know, Wix 4.1, you should not have huge differences in your output. And, and you know, a medical company, yeah, they have to revalidate everything, but there's scope to it. So, you know, so, so this principal will be surprised. I'm saying we shouldn't, we, this should not be a silent thing that we just no. slip in. So when we hit a point and we hit a breaking change in custom action, like let's not, let's not use X64 because I don't think it's a big deal. You think it's a bigger deal, whatever. Let's just go to something where it's like, yeah, no, this is a breaking change that we're going to put an extension. When can it introduce that? Does it have to wait for Wix 5? When does it get the ability to introduce that breaking it's change? It's an extension. So it doesn't, it's not dependent on the version of Wix, right? So, right. No. So then we just have to decide what's the version that it gets for that. If it's a breaking change, yeah, it should be, you know, noted somehow. And it might be that, that you know, point one is sufficient. I'm just saying we should, you know, we should have some uh, discussion or rules or whatever about it. I'm not saying Semver is the answer. I'm just... Yeah, I don't think Semver. I I don't believe in Semver, honestly. So um, yeah. It's just you know the opposite of Semver is you know master, and I think that's a bit challenging for people to you know embrace. There's a middle ground, and I think we should yeah kind of look at it. Uh. Yeah, anyway, to me, Sean, this problem, what you describe should be handled within the extension. It should be done for you basically automatically, so most people don't have to care, um, because I think trying to call it out is just complexity that is a pain. Think about what your project file looks like, everything. So it just doesn't It doesn't add things. Like, look, I'm building this MSI 64-bit. Please build it 64-bit. And if anything, maybe we should throw a warning saying, by the way, we had to throw in these 32-bit custom actions. That'll be okay because of WoW unless you don't have WoW. I, I, I could see someone arguing that. Um, but uh, it, 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 the extension should just pick the appropriate architecture. Uh, the same thing goes for ARM, should the work ever be done to bring all of ARM around. And well, there, the, I guess that's another thing where there's a lot of ARM code in before already that we uh, seem to be leaving behind. So. I'm not sure what to do with that either. But All right. Is it just me, or is everybody else here, Sean, is like a robot? <laughs> it's a little echoey. Uh, oh, lovely. 
don't know. I wonder what happens if I leave the meeting and then try to join again with the recording. Well, I mean, if it's just me, then no, I it's not worry about it. It's not you. It's it's. Jacob says you sound fine. I can't understand you at all. I hear rrr, rrr, rrr. It's a robotic Charlie Brown parent thing. Um, same thing was happened to Bob for a little while. Um, huh? I've had no hearing issues. Yeah, at least I could understand most of Bob's words. Um, all right. Well, maybe we just need to call the meeting here. I think we. We've we've ended up with things that I, I've known we will talk about in the future with micro repos that was just a matter of time, and I like that other people are discovering them to bring them up so that we can bring them up and other people are interested in talking about them instead of me raising them out of the blue and people going, what is that problem? Uh, one of them is what are we doing with setup, um, and the other is then I think the end result is um, when we make changes to extensions that are breaking or basically how do we communicate change to an extension outside of the trivial, yeah, this is a bug fix, it's clearly better than the last one, minor build, number, update, everybody's happy. Yeah, and it's all about the it's all about the the ability that micro repos give us to, you know, evolve the core tool set separately from the extensions. Yes. They're always in lockstep before and now yes. we have a new option. I'd say it's very much more, yeah, it's, it's very much NuGet, or the separation of the extensions means that they can actually get bug fixes themselves. It's entirely possible they will have more interest because now you can get a fix in it and not wait for the core tool set to do its next major yeah. world change. Um, I'm not holding my breath for that, let's be real clear. Yeah. Um, but it, it could happen. Um, and it can also happen incrementally. Right, pick one that's most important, convert that sixty four bit or whatever you're going to do, and then some time later do the next one, and that will right. work fine too. Once we solve how to version it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, my cough is better, but it's not gone. Um, does NuGet handle Minver Max for um kinda, but in the end you just say what version of whatever you want and you go forward. It's much easier to do it that way than to do ranges. Um but you could do something like a 4.0.star. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, but And if you don't follow Semver, then NuGet rules tend to not help real well. They're like, you must follow Semver, which is uh, difficult at best. Um, all right. I think this has been awesome. We've covered a lot of different things today. Um, I'm hoping this recording ends up sounding more like what you guys hear versus what I hear. Um, if not, <laughs> well, then you can listen to the recording and hear what I heard at the end, uh, which is or something to that effect. Um, so uh, two weeks from now, we'll be back, and we'll do it all again. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.